Hey, we're Anne Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to share with you our struggle with intimacy. Hey, thanks for joining us again this week. As usual, we want to invite you to subscribe to our channel so you get notified every single time we upload a new episode. Also, we would love for you to share this video with your married couple friends. So in this episode, we're going to just dive into um, one aspect of our marriage. It's been the one that has defined our ministry in many ways. It's mm-hmm. the one that started us into the ministry of, of just encouraging marriages and, and wanting to um, impart to other people what God's been teaching us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's in the area of intimacy. We did an episode telling our whole overarching you know marriage testimony, uh, but we just want to talk mostly in this episode about just what the intimacy issues were, what we dealt with, when it started, and uh, hopefully you guys can get um, just a, a bit deeper into knowing us, mm-hmm. and also maybe get some hope in you if you're in a situation similar to ours, uh, because you know we've talked to people that have had similar situations and they felt like us, hopeless. So in sharing with you, we hope that you would be encouraged. And also maybe even encourage you to tell your own story to someone to find help when you, if you need it. And uh, so that's what our goal is today. Yeah, sharing about sex and intimacy is not an easy topic to cover. Like it's not easy or natural to just tell the world about you I know, know, the I struggles even, that you've had. I even fought you on doing this one, this episode because <laughs> you I, was did. Like, I was like, do we really want to talk about that right But now? here's the thing. I found that um, as we shared our story over the years, mm. we found that it has um, brought healing and freedom and encouragement to other people in yeah. hopeless situations or painful situations, um, situations where just like us, they felt completely alone or yeah. too embarrassed to talk about it. And so we wrestled with all those insecurities in the beginning too, but as we we started to mm-hmm. talk about it we found that there it was okay to talk about it and we should be talking about certain things so that other people know how to get help or how you know just be encouraged to know that yeah. they're not alone in those struggles and to give them that little bit of hope that will carry them on through the next day and the next day and the next day yeah and the, in reality uh, you know the bible talks about just being children of light and we've talked about this in the yeah. past and um and the idea is like the enemy loves to keep us in the darkness. We like to keep our sin in the darkness. We like to keep our pains in the darkness. Don't tell anyone, don't share it. You're the only one dealing with it. Mm-hmm. And you know what it does is it keeps us right there. Yeah. Um, you never find healing, you never, you never find victory. And so we've found that the more we talk about it, the more victory we have over it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't control us emotionally, it doesn't control us physically, it doesn't control us spiritually. And so our ministry and hope is that we're p- helping people, teaching people, showing people by example. Hey, pull those things into the light so that they can become light. Yeah, and here's the thing, sex and intimacy is a huge part of marriage. And so for all those <laughs> yeah. listening, all the husbands and wives who listen to our podcast, I mean, they are dealing with that on a day-to-day basis yeah, anyway. In so, some form or fashion. Yeah. yeah, so we need to be talking about it. And so, Aaron, why don't you start out by just giving a little backstory from your side of uh, be- before marriage, so leading up to marriage. What were some of your expectations yeah. about sex? Well, we, uh, I-, I saved myself. I didn't have... Um, intercourse with anyone outside of marriage um i didn't i don't have a squeaky clean past though like i you know i struggled with pornography my whole life Uh, it was something that i it was a daily event for me and you know in my mind somewhere along the way and i know a lot of people think this a lot of men i thought that marriage would fix it Mm -hmm. i thought oh this is just something that i need now and in reality marriage only amplified it um which is a crazy thing to think, think about but Marriage doesn't fix sin. Mm-hmm. You know, we are supposed to, we're called to walk in that purity and that light, and the marriage isn't the key to it, that isn't the answer. Right. I, but I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did save myself physically, mm-hmm. um, even though I didn't save myself spiritually, uh, which is sad. And, uh, you know, getting married, I just was thinking like, okay, now now it's going to be all good. Uh, I'm going to be able to enjoy my wife. You were looking forward to it. I was looking forward to it. Like, I should, right? Yeah. Um, maybe looking forward to it at a wrong level <laughs> because of the things I yeah. um, was dealing with and, and walking in. But that's where I was at, you yeah. know, and I was looking forward to the, the wedding night. I was mm-hmm. looking forward to a life with my wife mm-hmm. and, you know, being able to have intercourse and, and enjoy my wife in that way. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that God owed me that because Mm -hmm. I had waited Mm -hmm. like the good Christian boy that I was. Yeah. Um, 
So my story is very similar. Um, I grew up a Christian. I saved myself mm-hmm. physically um, from intercourse, but also didn't have a squeaky clean past. I mean, there were some relationships that I had where, you mm-hmm. know, we did other things, but um, truly my heart was to give my body mm-hmm. to my husband. And um, I I did what I could to save that for you. And I, I had expectations of, um, I had really high expectations of it being, all fulfilling like I thought this the, is it yeah this is from like day one yeah yeah kinda. like I I envisioned our honeymoon night and I saw us you know being together <clears throat> and I just had a lot of hope for um being fulfilled in that area yeah. of my life because it was something that you know growing up yeah. it was always like no 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 you can't do that you know so yeah. there was a um a vision of freedom there that I was looking forward to yeah and there was also I, I remember we talked about this um early on in our healing process um in the in in the middle of our marriage, I should say now, um, where we talked about how, you know, not only was it you were looking for it to be all, all fulfilling, but you were looking for me to also fulfill other things yeah. just emotionally. And just yeah. like you saw me, you had me on a pedestal and I had you on the totally. same kind of pedestal. I, I did do that. Yeah. So it wasn't just sexually, but it was like everything, everything. every aspect of life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and that again, um, going along the process of, of walking through all of these things, we learned that, um, our expectations were just so out of whack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had no one talked like we've had the sex talk. Maybe I don't even actually remember having the sex talk. Well, we did do a series of premarital counseling sessions, which had some sex talk stuff. It was in more it. encouragement leading up to the marriage about how, how what marriage was going to be like. But no one warned us that it might not work. <laughs> no <laughs> well, one said like, "Hey, just just you know, it might not work." Yeah. <laughs> um, which you know we've sadly had people tell us uh, be, after hearing our story. That's why they, they they believe in sex outside of marriage. Like, well, what, what about test drive and that? Like, using those kinds of derogatory mm-hmm. terms. And but I didn't marry you for sex. Right. I saw it as a fruit of right. our marriage, um, and so that mentality is just totally demonic and wicked. And it should be if you're thinking that way, or if you you know people are thinking that way, they, the the end result's not sex. Mm-hmm. Um, the end result is a godly marriage. Right. For you know, doing ministry for God together. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we we had those wrong perspectives. We had those wrong attitudes. And to be honest, because of what we're going through, I remember um, very vividly those all those thoughts I had. Like, oh man, I wish I would have, you know, not saved myself for marriage. I actually remember regretting that. And I was on the other end having thoughts of we're incompatible. This yeah, isn't this gonna isn't, work isn't gonna because work. of this one aspect of our marriage. Yeah. So before we jump too far ahead, um, let's talk about the wedding day and. The wedding night. Can we skip that part? Let's go to. Right, let's just go right to when it was like all better. All of our dreams <laughs> crack came crumbling down. Yeah. It was so devastating. It was. Uh, we've read. We'll just say this. We've re. Um, we've redone our uh, honeymoon several times. Several times. <laughs> because okay. our our first honeymoon was so bad. <laughs> um, it was. You know, first of all, we we find that that's the night. It was the night that we realized that sex was not gonna yeah, happen. <laughs> now we had hope still because yeah. we were like, oh, this is day one. People it'll have t- said it's gonna it'll hurt. Take, yeah, it's it'll gonna... take a couple of days, and we then it turned into weeks, weeks and months, and months and years. <laughs> but not only did you know we weren't even able to like consummate our our marriage. Like we still were together. We still did things, and we're not gonna get vulgar on on you know our show. But um, you know we were together. We just couldn't fully be yeah. together. Um, I remember weeping. Like I remember just crying. Yeah, like why is this bed? not working? Yeah. And I, and I remember being patient too. Oh, you were so patient, and but all I just I just wanted to go lock myself in the bathroom for a couple hours and be by myself because I felt already that I've disappointed you or that I couldn't fulfill your needs and yeah, you, we, you, those insecurities came on like immediately. Well, and it's natural because you're like first of all the wedding day was really like intense, intense yeah. and long, and you're just tired and you're like. Now what are we supposed to do? Like yeah. it's n- no one. You can't be prepared for like stepping into holy matrimony. It's like mm-hmm. a it's a weird thing. Mm-hmm. And so we're like for the first time ever we've never slept with anyone before. We're like in now we're supposed to be like perfectly compatible and everything's yeah. supposed to be fine. And yeah. um, and I also remember on our wedding night, I remember thinking, and we I think we even talked about this how um, our whole lives being growing up Christians, sex was a sinful thing. Yeah, it was a no no. Not a just a thing. no-no. It was like it was like yeah. it was like the worst thing. That's what it felt like. And then all of a sudden we're married, and boom, it's like nope. Now it's all good. Yeah. And like there was this, we had these totally twisted views of sex mm-hmm. because no one 
in a healthy way within the church that we were raised in and in the churches and just yeah. in the church in, in general taught us to think about sex. Mm. Like not, I don't remember ever hearing from a youth pastor like sex is a good thing. Right, the gift that it is. The gift that it is mm-hmm. and that you should be um, protecting yourself because of how good it is mm-hmm. and how valuable it is. It's like protecting you know a wealthy investment or mm. a you know a fine piece of china or like these things that are they're valuable but they're only used in the right time for the mm. right thing that was never really like taught mm-hmm. to us we just had this perspective of like sin 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 married oh now it's no longer sin and like it should just all work and like it's going to be great and you have to, and your perspective should perfectly shift and change but here's the thing had it worked would our perspectives had changed because well, it didn't work, we it were It didn't, and it like hi- highlighted all of those things. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I, I would say um, it might not have highlighted those things fast enough. We've talked to people that yeah. they don't even talk about these things. Mm-hmm. They don't realize these these broken expectations or un, um, they're, they're uncommunicated lessons that we've learned. Yeah. And because they don't really struggle with it, it manifests in other ways. Mm-hmm. But because we were hit head on on with with this problem I think we actually started communicating about things that people mostly never get to Mm -hmm. like oh well I guess we like why is this you know supposed to be so easy in the first place Mm -hmm. Um, and we were like we started talking about all these things that we learned and like you know and even if it did work Mm -hmm. I remember you um, specifically had a very hard time being naked around me like which in the beginning like of course it's going to be uncomfortable and it was it was like oh this is like weird different yeah but we actually like I don't remember feeling clean mm. about it because of it, it's always been sin and all of a sudden now it's supposed to be good. Mm. Um, so not only could we not have sex and it was painful and there was tears and it's our honeymoon, but I also remember f- like not fully feeling free mm. with you. I remember feeling kind of dirty. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like when, when is this going to feel like it's supposed to feel like? Mm. Because no one ever gave us... Do you remember feeling that way? Like, yeah, and I think that a part of it too was the sin that was wrapped up with mm-hmm. um, sexual intimacy. For you, pornography. For me, it was... Right, you I know, wasn't clean. Yeah. yeah, things that I would think about mm. and um, you know, books that I would read. And so we both had sin wrapped up around... We had sexual, sexual sin that we brought into our marriage. Right, so it makes sense that we would also feel dirty... And when it doesn't work, yeah. we couldn't be together the way we were supposed to. So, which highlighted us desiring our sinful desires even more, even more to because be fulfilled. Yeah. now we're like, oh, now we're justified in our sin because yeah. this is supposed to work. And God, you're not giving me what I deserve. Therefore, yeah. I'm okay to do this over here, which mm-hmm. we weren't. But that's those are things that we thought. Yeah. Um, so, just moving on in the story, a couple weeks go by. Um, I think I talked to my mom and maybe a girlfriend about our situation and they kind of just looked at me funny and said, like you shouldn't be having a problem with that. Yeah, you shouldn't be having a problem. I'm sure it'll work itself out type of thing. Um, what was going on in your head in those weeks? Um, I kept telling my, you know me, I'm a, I'm an optimist. Mm -hmm. So I just kept telling you and myself like, Oh, like I've heard from various people over the time that we were getting married, get becoming married, um, that, it might be painful and that it takes time because it's ne- we've never done that before. Yeah. And, um, and so I'm just, I just kept repeating, like you were thinking really happy thoughts. I just, kept, I was hoping my happy thoughts would pay off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually for several years, I feel like you were so stable in this area emotionally. Um, even though you were probably wrestling, I'm sure you're wrestling. You, hiding. You were hiding what I was feeling. <laughs> you were hiding <Yeah>. good <laughs> because I felt as your wife, very encouraged, even in my, um, brokenness, that I there was hope and there was encouragement because of the words mm-hmm. that you showered over us. Yeah. And um, I just really appreciated that. And so just for those listening, like if you guys are facing, um, you know, intimacy struggles and e- whether it's the husband or the wife, mm-hmm. the other spouse can be a huge encouragement in this area simply by sharing words of hope, yeah. um, you know, visions of the future, um, encouraging praying. that. Praying. Yeah, which we did um, often, every single time. <laughs> you know, suggesting those, those hints of like, hey, why don't you go get this checked out or maybe you can go talk to a girlfriend because you did that kind of thing for me and um even though not all those solutions worked i remember going to the gynecologist well, none of them did. i was always <laughs> hoping that something was wrong with you no i know i was just going to share the story of going to the gynecologist and i remember um them you know telling me well you everything checks out you look fine and you like came home and crying I, yeah i was like there's nothing wrong with me <laughs> But yeah. I knew that something was wrong because it could, like, it was so, I don't even know if we've shared this yet on um, in this episode, but it was super painful for me physically to mm-hmm. um, engage in intercourse. And so it just, that's why it didn't work. Yeah. Um, and 
I just want to go back a, a couple steps. You were talking about, you know, me being encouraging for over the years. Yeah. Um, now that you're mentioning, I'm thinking like, yeah, why was I so encouraging? Because internally I was like angry and broken and like frustrated, but like mm-hmm. I was um, encouraging. And I think, like I said, I, I was still optimistic and I was, I wanted to believe yeah. that it was going to work, mm-hmm. right? Because I love you and I wanted to, I wanted everything to work. And um, But I think looking back, we would have been confronted quicker with the reality of it on my part um, if I wasn't walking in my sin Mm. because in reality I didn't need you as much as I probably should have needed you Mm. Um, I'm just thinking about not that I didn't want to encourage you not that I didn't want it fixed I think the the full weight of what was going on was being masked by my sin Mm. and I you know I'm sad to think about that that I wasn't letting myself experience with you at the Mm -hmm. same level as you because I was finding my satisfaction elsewhere Mm -hmm. in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, thank God he's, you know, fully, you know, cleansed me of that and he's taught me how to walk in purity um, through his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, But back then, I think that's where we were at. Like, I I was using as an excuse. I was, uh, you know, even though I still felt guilty and shameful and confessed to you, you know, time and time again of that sin, I think that's what shielded me from from walking fully with you in it, mm. which is is not good. Yeah. Definitely. And so, if anyone here is walking through something similar, and you're just wondering, like, you know, I want it, and my spouse doesn't, or you know, or vice versa, um, you guys need to come to a, you know, together and talk and see if there's any sin that might be masking you from actually walking together in it. That's really good. Just take some time to evaluate your lives and and confess and if confess necessary. If necessary, yeah. Um, and like fully confess and repent. What mm-hmm. I did is I would confess and not actually repent Mm -hmm. because repent means to turn Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't I would apologize for the guilt and I would apologize for doing it again but I would never fully repent um and so if if you're walking in any sort of sin if you if you're a husband and you're um walking in pornography and that's keeping you from desiring your wife and your wife desires to be with you you guys need to fix that and vice versa if your wife's walking in you know, pornography or, you know, erotica or these things that are right. going to keep her from desiring you, then you guys need to repent to each other, find healing, find um, accountability and wisdom and walk away from that so yeah. that you guys can walk together. In that. That's really good. And I don't want to skip over this um, by any means because I feel like pornography and, and sexual sin is such an important topic to tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are going to be doing a future episode yeah. on his and her points of view because yeah. we both have different um different journeys of walking this out with yep. each other so um just to encourage our listeners to stay tuned because those those episodes will be coming out yeah um but just to move forward in our story um our our struggle with intimacy lasted about um four years in total four and a half ish yeah so it was really exhausting it was really painful mm. It was really um, emotionally draining on Mm -hmm. both of us. Um, But like I said, you seemed a little bit more steadfast in that area and encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I... My, I felt like my heart just got harder and harder and harder towards you it and did. towards God. Yeah, definitely did, and that affected and amplified other issues in our marriage. Um, nor- normal things that people struggle with, like finances or um, job making decisions, yep. or you know anything that comes our way. I just felt so um, irrational over and didn't want to deal with, and um, you know I just remember having outbursts and you know Mm. struggling with rage and um we had some pretty good fights i mean i don't i don't (laughs) even like thinking about going back to that place because it was so unhealthy and spiritually unhealthy for our relationship and it wasn't where we envisioned our marriage to be Mm. four years in by any means i remember going back to those expectations where like we were expecting everything to be perfect i literally thought before i got married i was like i'm never gonna fight with my wife i'm perfect that was a thought (laughs) a literal thought i had i actually (laughs) thought the exact same thing i was like i'm way too perfect to have any problems like i'm I'm easy going like (laughs) if we have a disagreement i'm like okay And like the the one person in the world that can make me the most mad <laughs> is now one with me. Uh, you know, we, we read a book once um, and in the book it talked about uh, your spouse being a full, full length mirror reflecting your sin back at you. And that's exactly what you are when you're yeah. in marriage. And so not only did we have sin we were walking in, not only did we have this this sexual issue that we where we couldn't have intercourse, we couldn't be together, we couldn't consummate our marriage fully. Uh, highlighting those sins Mm -hmm. now we're like having to be like 
we have to live together and walk together and every day we know that like such and such is happening and oh and it doesn't matter like our term for sex was like we wouldn't say hey you want to be together tonight we'd say hey you want to try you want to try that was literally yeah. our term you hated it you hated but that it. was literally the what it was yeah because it was it was like we want to try tonight yeah. you want to see if it'll work tonight never did mm-hmm. and you know maybe like a handful of times we we were able to have intercourse but it was not without pain yeah it wasn't right? successful by any means and and that was our world we lived in and you know we thought we were the only ones mm-hmm. that dealt with it we've had people kind of like reprimand us in our um, online and say why didn't you guys just go get help <laughs> We did, <laughs> and we did. We talked to we talked to nurses. She, you went to gynecologists. We we actually sat down with a counselor one time, mm-hmm. and the and the person gave us you know some terms that we'll mention later about what it might be, yeah. and that was it. But they just kind of they look they looked at us the same way everyone else looked at us. Like you're young, you shouldn't really be struggling with this, but yeah. okay. And we're just okay, and so we kind of just stuffed it back and mm-hmm. kept doing our life and pretending everything was fine and. We were really good roommates. Yeah, we were. Um, other than all the fights, um, <laughs> we we could still muster. We were friends mm-hmm. to to an extent, but not lovers. Yeah. And not in love with each other. That was um, a tough four years. So, yeah. what do you think got us through those four years? I mean. Well, uh, you know, we we both were believers, mm-hmm. even though we were both mad at God, even though we were both becoming more more bitter with our situation. Um, we definitely weren't as righteous as Job you know, who went through way more than us. You know, we were like immature. We complained. And complained about everything (laughs) and thought we were, you know, oh, you know, woe is us. Mm -hmm. And um, when there's people in the world suffering from way worse things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We were so self-focused back then. But I I do believe that at the end of the day, we still did. We we had our foundation in Christ. Mm -hmm. And even though we were immature in the way we looked at God, immature in the way we walked with God, immature Mm -hmm. in everything, Mm -hmm. God was with us. Mm -hmm. And watching over us and walking us through us. And, you know, as the scriptures say that God works together for good, um, all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And so this thing that we saw as as evil and painful and not good at all, Mm -hmm. God is sitting back watching what it's doing to us. Yeah. He's using this crucible in our life to sanctify us and to change us and to transform us and to bring us to our knees yeah. because we were so young, so immature, so prideful, so arrogant mm-hmm. with our what, how we believe things were going to go, what we were going to do, how we were going to, you know. And God's like, actually, I got different plans for you and this is not going to go the way you think. Yeah. And you know what? If, if the only thing it did was highlight our sexual sins, which is not the only thing it did, but it massively did, God used it to draw those out and say, no, I don't want any of this. Yeah, he pruned us. <laughs> like majorly. A lot. <laughs> yeah. He pruned us down to like stubs. And he's like, now, now you can produce fruit. I'm seriously so grateful for God's love and compassion and grace in our lives. And I feel like that is the reason why we made it past those years because he never gave up on us. Yeah. And like you said, he brought us to our knees. Like he never once turned his back or abandoned us and even when my heart was super hard and I refused to go to church with you because I just didn't I knew what it meant stepping into Mm -hmm. his place like I just wasn't ready for that um even then he was still pursuing me through you you know you would pray for us when he was pursuing me and because I felt this like I'm like I don't want to give up like I don't know what else to do but like I know God's the only one that could do anything yeah. to, to make this better. So just to encourage those listening again, if you are in the midst of any sort of marital struggle, um, prayer was so key and vital yeah. in helping us walk through this valley, this this darkness that we experienced. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you and your spouse are struggling with anything, please be the one that initiates through prayer because you don't know how it's yeah. going to change things. It, you don't know how it's going to change you or yeah. affect your spouse. And it was so powerful. Um, in mm. in the trajectory of our marriage and and bringing change to our marriage. Yeah, and God uses our He calls us to pray, mm-hmm. and desires us to communicate with Him and commune with Him. Right. Um, and even though many of our prayers were selfish and um, <laughs> wrong focused and backwards, we were still communicating with Him. Mm-hmm. And it at minimum puts your focus on God. Yep. And reminds you that He's there. Yeah. Right. Even if you feel like He's not listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, because God wants us to pray in his will. Mm-hmm. 
And his will was that we would be mature, not that we would be necessarily happy. Mm-hmm. He wanted he wants mature and holy people. Mm-hmm. And so I think, yeah, just God, I, I, I don't even want to take credit. like Because it's easy to say, like, well, we prayed and like we did these things. But I, I really think that God kept us. Yeah. And was was guiding us through this, and kept even when we were angry would remind us like mm-hmm. like I'm still a good God, yeah. and He is a good God. He's a perfect God, and He knows what we need way better than we know what we we need. And what's awesome is out of this, like who knew like a ministry would kind know, of come right? out of this pain. I couldn't even imagine. And well, we wouldn't even think. It's not like we got married. Like, hey, let's start a marriage ministry. No like, do you want to go through four and a half years of, of <laughs> nope. you know, just kind of like marital suffering, and then <laughs> and then we'll, like, no, we would we wouldn't go back and choose it either. But we we're glad that God's getting the glory. Yeah, we're get we're, we're I'm even more so than the ministry that God's given us and that and that He's allowed us to do this for a living mm-hmm. and and just encourage other marriages and, and the, the fruit that we've seen in other people's lives through God working through us. Um, I'm just thankful that God grew, uh, matured us and taught us what He taught us through that season. Absolutely. And still teaches us, mm-hmm. you know, how to trust Him and how to surrender to Him because, um, you know, leading up in our story we got to a point finally where the weight of it started hitting me and I couldn't handle it anymore. Mm-hmm. And I was like done, yeah. like emotionally, spiritually, physically. And <clears throat> and I was just over it. And you can see it on my face. And we, you know, we still would go to church most Sundays, you know, and do the, do the run through the motions. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there and we're just, we were quiet on the way to church. And we, you know, you talk about this in your book, um, but this was the turning point. You know, and I don't remember what the the message was about that day, but I remember God speaking to me. Um, I didn't hear him audibly. I didn't hear him say, "Aaron, stay married." But he brought to remembrance, which is what the job of the Holy Spirit is. He brought to remembrance the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I remember just walking through the story and remembering the prayer that Jesus prayed three times. He said, "Lord, let this cup pass from me." And he's talking about the cup of suffering that he was about to take for his future bride. That's what, that, that's what this story is about, mm-hmm. is Jesus dying on the cross for his bride because mm-hmm. um, the church is his bride. And he's, he prayed that he didn't have to. Lord, if there's another way. He says, but not my will, but your will be done. And so essentially he was saying, this is going to be hard and I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to do your will anyway. Mm-hmm. And Jesus had to do it in God's strength because God was the one empowering him to do this and he had to die as a man. Yeah. So he felt all of it. Mm -hmm. So I just remember this story of Jesus praying these things three times, asking God to to take the cup of wrath away. And and I just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, like, Jesus died for the whole world, for a a bride that spit on him and uh, cheated on him and did way worse things than what you're going through with your wife. And he said, if Jesus can do this, do you think you can do it for your wife? He was saying, like, can will you will you take this cup? (laughs) <laughs> which is what he was asking me. And in reality, I'd already chosen to take the cup. We had made the vows. Yeah, we were married. <laughs> and so I was just reminded, I'm like, well, either I can walk away from my vows and and think that I'm owed something that Jesus didn't even get, or I can take what I've been given and I can serve my wife and love my wife, even if I never get from her what I think I'm deserved. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was such a, the, the cup that I had to carry was such a smaller cup compared to what Christ carried yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, and not to compare me to Christ necessarily, but it was the Holy Spirit saying like, Christ died for you. Like the least you can do is live for your wife. And I remember thinking like, well, okay. And it wasn't like that simple. I was like weeping. You were crying pretty but, hard. But <laughs> um, I just came to the conclusion and I said, whether it ever fixes it was not my, my love for my wife was rekindled that day and mm-hmm. said, and it was a more of a Christ like love I was at say, that it point. Was, it was different because I decided to, to let I chose to love you whether I could ever get from you, whatever I deserved from you as a wife. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to do as husbands is we have to choose to love our wives as Christ loved the church, giving himself up for her, as Ephesians 5 25 says. And I don't get to say, like, only if. No, I get to throw all of that out and say, I'm going to do what Christ has called me to do because that's what Christ has called me to do. And I've made a choice. I've married my wife. She's my wife, and I have to love her this way. And the story doesn't stop there, but that's where the story, this new story began, Yeah, was me choosing to remain, even if nothing ever changed. 
And so why don't you go to the next part of this and we'll, you know, we'll get to the, the happy ending. Yeah, it was uh, that same week that uh, you were in the shower and I remember specifically you yelling out to me, babe, what was, what's the one thing you've been using for the last four years plus, you know, more than four years before we were, married, yeah. before we were even married. And I knew exactly what you were talking about. I was like, my face wash, why, <laughs> you know, and um, you, you said, yeah, I remember that story. So about six months before this happening um we sat down with another couple from the church and kind of shared with them our struggle of intimacy um (laughs) trying to look for help and um i remember um our friend sharing the story about one of her friends that went all organic to try and heal pcos um because she was struggling with um just some symptoms that were uncomfortable for her yeah and so um her story went, she went all organic, changed all of her household products, and she ended up pregnant, which, which is, is really hard. Yeah, it's really hard to PCOS. happen with PCOS. So anyways, um, so we kind of threw that that. Yeah, we weren't story. trying to get pregnant at the time. So we were thinking like, okay. like Yeah, we threw that story out problem. because we thought it's, it doesn't yeah. impact us in any way. But for some reason, that story stuck with well, you. Well, when I was in the shower, I felt like, like that story came to my head and I was like, okay, so that girl got made she she felt better from those symptoms by changing some of her face washes and shampoos and conditioners and stuff and so i'm in the shower and i'm like looking at all the bottles <laughs> and i'm like and there's all these chemicals on them you know what i'm talking about you yeah. you have all these just grab one of your soap bottles or face wash <laughs> bottles and just see if you can name any of them ingredients and so i'm calling to you and you're like my face wash it's the only thing that she's been the most consistent with and i remember because we had a lot of fights about it because um, we through our marriage because it's expensive <laughs> it was expensive and we didn't have a lot of money back then being missionaries but it was the traveling. one thing she's like i have to have, I have it. to have it i actually used it multiple times a day because it i felt yeah. like it did help keep me from having acne <laughs> yeah so uh i'm like hey I would rather you have acne and us be able to be together um, <laughs> than the other way around. And she's like, there she was, was like crying. She's like, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> well, and the reason that you were asking me to give it up is because when you got out of the shower, you started Googling all of these ingredients. And I looked up every single ingredient on the bottle. There were a handful that were um, uh, different types of parabens. And yep. when you looked that up, uh, it, this uh, website popped yep. up that talked about parabens being endocrine disruptors. So they even knew back then. Well, what I, yeah, what I looked up is I, I went to a, a toxins website chemical toxins website and you can put in these chemical these ingredients and it'll tell you the level of toxicity um over half of them were like high mm-hmm. um the other half were low or none but over half of them were like high and then what i would do is i would read what the possible symptoms or what they possibly can affect was mm-hmm. um and the ones that um because i'm not a scientist yeah we don't know the ones that mean. affected the areas that we struggled with <laughs> the reproductive were, areas. were the parabens which um which mimic estrogen yeah which affect the endocrine system which affect um all those sexual hormones and like so he's everything. very quickly putting all this together and he's come up with this idea that hey maybe uh these parabens from your face wash maybe they're affecting you are affecting you and mimicking estrogen so that your body's not functioning the way that it should be and yeah. that's why it's painful and i'm sitting there going yeah right i don't want to give up my face wash <laughs> so we've we've brought this up many times and people are like oh so you got rid of your face wash and that fixed everything and they're like mad about it right but like seriously I even went back to my gynecologist to tell them what was happening with this scenario and she didn't even believe me she was like no it has no so regardless if it works for everyone we had tried a lot of things yeah like everything (laughs) like someone was like just go have a bottle of wine and relax did nothing uh you know oh just think about this or put some worship music on or just, like they gave us a plethora of all these things sure. that we could do different positions different everything <laughs> right not to be graphic you know but we tried everything yeah so if we care enough about our marriage why would we not try this so long story short we put the face wash on the shelf i gave it up and i kid you not three days later i'm calling Aaron on the phone middle of the day we're both at work and i'm like look i don't want you to get too excited but like my body feels different my body feels different and um i don't want to try right away because i don't want to get my hopes up but yeah. like this feels right. And so we went another couple days and by the end of the week we had sex for the first time. And it was awesome. And it was awesome. Yeah. It felt like <laughs> it felt like the first redo from our honeymoon. Yeah. That was when we started redoing our honeymoon <laughs> was that day. Yeah. But so we went back and what we did is we just we just started cleaning out all these things that we thought we yeah. needed. Um, you know, it started with parabens, like anything with parabens went, and then as we this kind of mm-hmm. like 
started our journey for healthy living. Um, yeah. It wasn't just parabens, but it moved on to other types of ingredients that we found out were bad yeah. for us. Um, it even moved into food, you know, being more yeah. aware of conventional versus organic and GMO and and just, just what what everything. ingredients are in our stuff. And you know, we the Bible wants us to be wise people. Mm-hmm. The Bible desires to be wise and mature. Mm -hmm. And so we don't just sit in our spirituality is over here and everything else is over here. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. No, actually, everything should be within our, in the confines of the relationship that we have with God. And so when it talks, like the Bible talks about health. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about our bodies and how they're the temple of the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and how we are to use them and not use them. So why would it be so unspiritual to not look at, and be considerate of the things that we put in our body and on our bodies. Which actually can be a lot, because when we started cleaning stuff out, we realized that we could take these five body washes, different scents and things that we, we had one, in our shower, and replace it with one and thing. Replace it with one thing. So Which is cheaper. I know. And better. And better. I love and it. more healthy <laughs> yeah. for you. And so we downsized a lot, but in a really good way for our bodies. And I just want to add to what you're speaking about. You know, why would it be unspiritual for us to choose to make sure uh, what we're putting in our bodies yeah. and on our bodies is, is good for us? Um, the same is true when you think about the enemy. So, mm-hmm. you know, why wouldn't he try and attack from an outside angle, an outside source. Well, he's going to use everything at his He's going to use everything he he's has. He's the prince of the air. That's what he does. Yeah, he's going to use everything he can get his hands on to try and destroy what we have. And so a big part of um, our encouragement and mm. one of the reasons why I wrote the Unveiled Wife book was to try and get husbands and wives to understand that sometimes we fight in our marriage because of outside uh, influences. Sometimes it things is something... Things we allow in, things we don't aren't paying attention yeah. to, things we're not being aware of. Yep. Some, some things that are just yeah. in our environment that we can change, we have control over, that we're just not paying attention to. Yeah. And so I think that that's a really, really important aspect for um, Christians mm-hmm. who are called to um, to fight against the enemy and to be prepared against to be wise. his attacks. Yeah. And I, I want to I wanna highlight, we are not um, advocating that um, being all organic and eating non-GMO foods makes you more holy. Right. This has nothing to do with holiness per se Mm. this has everything to do with being wise it's it's wisdom and so for us um you know if my wife uses a detergent just to talk about our bodies if she uses a a detergent that has any dyes or scents in it like perfumes i get a rash over my whole body my sons have the same similar sensitivities on their Mm -hmm. skin my skin is sensitive i don't know why it's not sensitive to everything it's just sensitive to certain chemicals um so detergents like like i know i'm like babe did you use a different detergent because like my whole body is like red and itchy and painful um and so why would like my i believe that you were probably more sensitive to this than other people are because other people don't struggle the same way and they use the same face wash um but for us we we just started realizing like well like we should be wise about everything yeah like how we spend our money what we spend our money on what we eat what we Mm -hmm. put you know what we put in on our bodies not to become more holy not that it makes us closer to god but that it makes us more like god Mm -hmm. because it makes us we we think the way god thinks Mm -hmm. he wants us to be wise and so we're going to be wise with everything he's given us yeah and here's the really cool thing since sharing about our story even though like aaron said we're not scientists we had no idea back then if it really was the parabens they didn't do non-paraben stuff back then well we started seeing a lot of non-paraben free cosmetics sans paraben Um, And since sharing your story through the Unveiled Wife community, we've heard so many stories of women saying, hey, I read your book, or hey, I read that article. I made a change. I made a change. I took parabens out, and me and my husband can have pain-free sex now. And so I'm, again, not even trying to use those stories to brag or um, say "This this is the right thing, but there is something to say about um, about testimonies and about things working. And so I just wanna be yeah. an encouragement to you guys today that if you are struggling specifically with painful sex, maybe try parabens, maybe try and eliminate- Don't try them. I'm oh, sorry. Get rid of them. <laughs> maybe try eliminating yeah. parabens. <laughs> and you know, I just wanna keep reiterating that the main crux of our story is that we decided to, to love each other mm-hmm. the way Christ has called us to love each other regardless if this got fixed. Yep. Now, I believe that the Holy Spirit prompted this to us mm-hmm. for the sake of our, our, our sexual and our sexual health and overall health. Yeah. Um, so whether or not you go and take the same route as us, mm-hmm. 
our goal in telling you this story is not to change you and be like, well, it's more Christian to be, you know, organic. Mm. We don't believe that. No. And there's plenty of times that we go out to eat or we know that <laughs> there there's plenty of food out there that we still eat. That's we eat Ben not, and Jerry's ice cream. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, but the, the point is, is are, are we going to be, um, are we going to walk through our trials with biblical mindsets? Mm -hmm. That's the, the main point. And then lastly is when, when it comes to things about our health and our bodies and what we put in and on them mm -hmm. is are we going to be wise? Mm -hmm. Are we going to say, okay, Lord, like, am I just going to use this just because it's what I've always used and, yeah. and I'm going to spend my money on this thing over here because it's what I like? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to be like, well, let's consider it. Let's mm -hmm. think about what, what we're doing and why we, why we do that. Because it wasn't just that you were like, you, that was the only stuff that worked. Yeah. You believed it was the only stuff that worked, but you had this like Honestly, the actual physical attachment to it. You're like, I cannot, I have to spend this money. I know. And if I don't have it, so you had an identity thing wrapped up in it also. I really did. And the funny thing is, is after we shelved it, <laughs> I never broke out. Like She hasn't broken out since the day she put no. it on the shelf. So, so I think it was making you break out. I, I don't know. It was, it's a perfect like <laughs> business model. No, I don't know. Face wash that makes you break out and you have to keep buying it. You have to keep using it. No, I don't think that's the case. But... <laughs> But I, I will say that I do feel like the Lord blessed me in being obedient to you. And so that's a really encouraging thing for any wives listening or even husbands. When your oh, spouse... Oh, good point. Because I asked you to do something really hard and you said yes. Yeah. So when your spouse brings something to the table, a suggestion, they don't know if it's going to work, but they're like, hey, I'm willing to try this if you are. Be willing. Yeah. Be willing. Don't just you know throw out your justifications, your excuses, or your, um, your, your reasons for why you need to have that control because... Yeah your spouse might be prompted by the Holy Spirit to encourage you in that area. And yeah, it might be hard, but it can be done. And I think that God's looking for, mm -hmm. you know, that, that heart of willingness mm -hmm. to go at your struggles as a team. Um, and, in, and if you're going to be a team, you got to do that communication thing where you're both listening, you're both yeah. communicating, you're both you're, talking, you're it both out. praying and in the word of God. Yeah. Um, and just asking the Lord to direct you yeah. and guide you. And listen, yeah. listen to his direction, listen mm -hmm. to his guidance, um, which usually comes through the word of God and the Holy Spirit bringing to remembrance the things that the word of God says. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he speaks to us. Yeah. And so... Another thing that I wanted to mention um, as a part of our story is once we were able to um, enjoy sexual intimacy in our marriage, it didn't make things better completely. Um, there was still oh, yes. there was a Thank lot of hurdles um, that I had to overcome as far as you know. Um, we had spiritual and mental hurdles. Well, I know for me, I was still apprehensive to even go there with you, and so it was a, a mental battle for me yeah. to to initiate or to say yes to mm -hmm. or to. Um, you know, be be inviting in that area. I just, it was yeah. really hard for me. Well, and we worked through that. It mm -hmm. took, a, it actually took several years because we had like yeah. four and a half years of like pain mm -hmm. to to heal from. Yeah. And so we, we both had to communicate about it and, yeah. you, and we got, you got good at saying, okay, hey, I know you want to, I just, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Or can we do it tomorrow? Yeah. Or be patient with me. Right. Or there'd be times where it did work and it did work and it did work and then it didn't work. And I still would get so flared up. Like I would, yeah. back then it would remind me of all those, all, those memories. all those painful memories of it not being yeah. able to work. And I thought, oh no, is this where we're going again? So I just, um, I wanted to bring that up because sometimes we do find a solution or mm -hmm. we do find something that works and yet something sets us back. And so if mm -hmm. you're listening right now and you're in the, the midst of experiencing that setback, don't be discouraged. Like, keep pressing forward and, and mm -hmm. communicating with each other on the topic. Yeah. And, you know, even to this day, um, we're still learning how to be lovers. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've we been married 11 years mm -hmm. now, and we missed four and a half years of those 11. <laughs> um, and you know what? Recognizing that you're gonna, we're going to learn how to be lovers for the rest of our lives. And we should be. Like, we should, yeah. that should excite us. And so not realizing, like, I, we've realized that it's, there's no pinnacle. We're going, to, we're going to get to that point and they're like, oh, now it's like all, you know, hunky dory. Yeah. You know, we're, we have to recognize that it, there's, there's th like we have to learn, we go, this is weird, but we go through seasons of forgetting about sex and just we're busy. And because we, we had went through so long of, of having that, those issues, um, we, we don't have the same natural um, sex drives that we w would have had in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we actually have to like work harder mm -hmm. to want to be together and to, and to really, oh, I, we, we've been forgetting about this. We need to prioritize this right now. Like putting it on the calendar and, and, and <laughs> planning it and, and talking about it more. And so we, we've gone through weird seasons. Yeah. And, you know, so even today, you know, it's been years later, we're still figuring it out. And 
but we're both okay with it. We both talk about it often and we're mm-hmm. like, hey, where are you at with this? Yeah. How, how are we doing? Um, and then especially going through all the pregnancies, like there's definitely you know, highs and lows and, and just a balance mm-hmm. and figuring out how to communicate about it and how to still, you know, be excited about each other. Um, so if you're, if you're coming out of a season of, of hardship sexually, recognize that it's just not going to be perfect forever. Yeah. Like it, there's, you it's, it takes a lifetime to learn how to be a lover. Mm-hmm. Um, but to embrace that and to do it together, um, of course, you have to have sex together, but <laughs> do the embracing together and the walking the journey out together. So we just wanted to be an encouragement that you would just just do this journey together and you know f- seek the word of God, seek after God's face, and and be patient with each other. So we just wanted to kind of start back at the beginning and share a little bit more in depth of our uh, struggle with intimacy, just mm-hmm. to encourage those who are listening who might be in that season. You know, you might, for whatever reason, be struggling with sexual intimacy in your marriage. And we don't want this to be the thing that mm-hmm. breaks you guys. We don't want this to be the thing that hardens your heart or keeps you away from God. Because truthfully, he's the only one that walked us through this journey mm-hmm. and um, made sure that our marriage came out stronger and better. Um, but it was only when we submitted everything to him. And so yeah. we want to be an encouragement to you to submit your hearts to God, to be in prayer over your marriage, over um, finding a solution, and, um, and never give up. Just persevere through it. Um, if you need to you know, talk to someone or if you need to go see a doctor, or if you need to um, change something, you know, in the pattern of your life to mm-hmm. try and fix this, make sure that you guys are doing it together as a team. Just like Aaron was saying, like be be on the same page, communicate about where you're at, where your hearts are at, what you're struggling with, what mm-hmm. you're going through, maybe what your needs are, and be willing to um, to help each other and to support each other and be that encouragement for one another. So thanks for joining us for this week's episode, and we look forward to having you next week. Did you enjoy today's show? Find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage.